Oh, I don't know if it started. Oh, maybe it started recording. Hello and welcome to Tipsy Talk, episode one, everybody. Welcome to the Tipsy Talk. Today, we're going to be tipsily talking about big roster changes coming through in the SPL scene. Um, today's the 15th. Oh, no, it's, well, it's just the 15th. It was the 14th until 13 minutes ago. It's currently quarter past 12. I've been out to the pub, went to a pub quiz, finished second. Thank you for asking. Got 15 pounds off my bill. Pretty good, all in all. Um, But yeah, today we're going to be talking about the roster changes which have come through this week. We've seen roster changes for United and a roster change for Renegades. So uh, let's get into it, basically. Let's talk first of all so this is what kicked off the uh, look at the camera. All right, let me let me move this bad boy over. The, just, the stream chat's gonna be in front of the camera. So now you guys get me awkwardly staring at you all the time, and I can't see my own face, so I don't know how I look. Oh no, it's so stressful. I'm such a bad uh, a bad person at this. Okay, I'm looking at the camera. Are we happier now? Are we happier now? Great. Um, United roster changes. United roster changes. YouTube, don't pay attention to the Twitch chat, by the way. Don't listen to them. They're your misbehaving younger cousin. I mean, YouTube. YouTube's probably younger than Twitch. Let's be honest. But whatever. Okay. E United roster changes chat. Everyone focus up. Focus up. United roster changes. So, United decided they've been bottom of the league. They've, uh, they're 0 10 in sets and United have decided to make two roster changes to their roster so I don't know if they always wanted to make two roster changes or this is just the way it turned out from what I heard there was um discussion within the team on how these roster changes go but basically the start of it was they were able to get Baskin Baskin was willing to play for United because he no longer had to move and he could continue with school I think while he's um, playing in the SPL, and he's obviously a very, a very, very good player. So, uh, so teams would look to get him no matter what. Um, and they, they thought they'd bring him in. <laughs> they thought they'd bring him in. Um, and so they did. They, 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 they were like, we're going to bring him into the roster. And then from then on, it was a discussion about who would drop out. I think initially the plan was not to have Variety drop out of the roster, it was to have one of the members of the duo lane drop out of the roster. Obviously, I can't speak to exactly what the plan is from the team or pl what the plan was and how it went down, but the the consensus seems to be, I mean, this is what I think Hurrowind has said, was basically that Variety wanted to play with Guy ADC, um, whereas the others wanted to keep um, the others wanted to keep Snoopy seems to be the way it's turned out, and because of that, Snoopy has stayed. Variety is gone, and and uh, Gino has come in as the support. Gino, by the way, I'm sure a lot of people watching this and, and paying attention to this kind of thing won't won't pay too much attention to the SEC. Gino is basically regarded as the best SEC support. It's like kind of in EU you have genetics and tricks, in my opinion. Tricks obviously not an option for teams to pick up, and in NA I think you have Gino as the best support. Um, and I think those three are all SPL caliber for me. I think they could all walk into an SPL team, in my opinion. We've seen uh, genetics still already with the United, and now we're seeing Gino do it. We'll see how he does. Um, but I think Gino is a really good player, and I think he's going to work out very well for them. Well, I I hope he does anyway. Um, I think Gino's Gino's good. That's that's what I would say. If you don't know Gino, he's a very solid player. And I assume you all know Baskin. Baskin's pretty good as well. So Baskin into solo and uh, and Gino into support and Snoopy back to ADC. So the question comes here, is this a good roster change for United overall? I mean, I, I, I don't think you can argue that it isn't. I don't think you can argue that this is a bad move for the roster because they were 0-10, right? They had to change something. They can bring in... A player who has been regarded as the best at, in the world at times in Gino, they can mix it up. They can get Snoopy out of the support role where he wasn't exactly flourishing back into ADC. Um, do I think it's a shame for the other two players? I do. I think in particular, 
I think Variety has been one of the best players on on that team. I think he's probably been the best player on that team over the the entire season, if you ask me. Um, and I think Guy has actually played pretty decent. I think it's a shame for Guy to lose his spot. I think he's played well. I don't. He's obviously not as experienced as others are, and stuff like that. But uh, I think he's he's done really well. But I think it is a good change for United. So I can see why they did it. As much as it sucks for people like for for Guy especially, I think Guy is the one dropping out of the league. Right, it really sucks for Guy, and I feel really bad for him. And I hope he gets a chance in the future. Um, I really do because I think I think considering when he came in, especially like his Ram performances, he was playing really well. I know Ram seems to be the best god in ADC at the moment, but he was doing really well on him. He was he was performing on Freya. He was he was just performing. Right, he was having good sets. Um. The other thing for this team, I guess, if we're, we're going to talk a little bit more. Oh, his Twitlunger is very insightful. I have read it, Elimox. I have read it. So I'll maybe link that down below for people to have a read. So hopefully people can uh, read more into into what's going on. But basically, yeah. Harry's Twitlunger kind of explains a lot of his thinking around why they made the roster changes, which is which is good. I think it's worth reading. Um, yeah. I think for United as a whole, another thing to look at is that um, I feel like they've picked up. Well, for me, this is the way I look at it anyway. I feel like they've they've gone from a group of three and a group of two, which is the way I kind of saw it before. Well, the way I think it was anyway. I think, why do I have two beds? Just in case, hardcore. Just in case I have friends over for a sleepover. Um, I think, <laughs> fuck. Um, you can. You're welcome anytime. I think previously they were a group of three pals in Scream, Snoopy, and uh, and Hurry. And then they had two others that were kind of on the outside in Variety and Guy. And now I feel like they're much more of a group of five. I don't know how Gino fits in with that, but I feel like Baskin's definitely one of the boys, you know. And this is a thing, this is a, a thing that really matters, is that teams are quite... Teams and, and players and, and, and groups of players, especially across regions, can be quite cliquey, can be quite, can be more comfortable among guys who they've known for a long time and, and, and teammates who they've played with before and people who they hang out with all the time, you know? And I imagine that these guys are all part of sort of the NA inner circle. They all hang out, they all chat, they're all pals. And I think, you know, that's something that might have come into the discussion when it came to especially the discussion between having Gino Snoopy and having Variety Guy in the duo lane might have been that, you know, this is maybe more that these two would be two of the boys and they're going to get on better with the rest of the team and it's more of a an environment thing than a necessarily um, than necessarily an individual performance game. Because I don't think, I honestly don't think there's a, well, in fact, if I were to pick either Snoopy or Guy J to play on my team tomorrow. I would pick Guy J. I think as an ADC, but I think that I think team environment comes into it a lot more than we give credence to sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think that's the 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 upshot of the United stuff for me. And I guess I don't know. Chat, have you got any comments on any of that? Do you guys feel like I'm being uh I'm being I'm wrong about anything, or if there's anything I haven't touched on? I'll open up the floor to you before we move over to the Renegades change. Um, recency bias on the ADCs? I mean, if you're talking recent, I, I don't... I, I, I think Snoopy has had a great career scream, but I don't think he had a good year this year previous to him moving to support either, personally. But that's just me. Uh, the other thing is, it's very, it's very hard to look good on a team that was struggling as much as United have been throughout most of the year as well. So, hey, Okianos, how you doing? What's United's potential now? I think their potential is higher. How high do I think it is? I'm not sure. Then Meerkat in the team this weekend would be the SML rematch of the SPL. That would, oh, that would be great. You don't think it's bad as people think in the first place? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm misremembering. You have Snoopy in a decent spot on my first tier list? 
Yeah, but that's because Vote, Cyclone, and uh, and Gaije were horrific, Big Fat Idiot. I think Snoopy was better than all of them first phase, right? Is that who I had him above? If I remember correctly. Do you remember how bad they were? I don't like I don't want to shit on I know this isn't this isn't vote did I say Gaije? Sorry, I meant Wowie. My bad. Wowie. Wowie is who I meant. Um but vote Cyclone and Wowie phase one were horrific. Horrific. And anybody I don't know, man. I'm sure they don't think they were horrific, but they kinda were. What's up, Gopher? A lot of it's pretty immature, to be Thought this was about winning, putting the best team together, not picking a lesser talent because you like someone better. That's not at all the case, PS4. Remember, talent isn't everything, and which is what we're going to get onto a little bit. And I think especially this the roster switch that Renegades have made kind of shows you that talent is everything. And a lot of it is, it's, it's, can't, you can't, from the outside looking in, sure, you can say this player, I think this player is better than this player, but you have no idea what the scrim environment's like. You have no idea how easy it is for to live with them, which is another big thing that's a new kind of... Um, was the option to substitute Harry for Baskin and Snoopy for Gino considered? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't know. I can't tell you that for sure, but I imagine Harry was considered an integral part of this team and someone who didn't deserve to be replaced would maybe be the... You know, the upshot of their scream saying no. He's like, no, I'm keeping hurry. He's mine. Um, but yeah, you, you, can't, you can't say that, you know, I think this player is better. Therefore, um, it's wrong to, to switch him out. It's not all about individual skill. It really isn't. Uh, which I think we've seen time and time again. I think last year you look at, um, what were they called last year? The, the the team that flopped <laughs> with uh, adapting zeros and Millsy, Deathwalker, and uh, vote PK. Yeah, PK last year. There's there's your there's your star roster guys. There's your pick up five really good players in their roles and put them on a team and see how they do. And how did they do? Poorly, poorly. It's not about. <laughs> Did someone get kicked pull or not pull in Yonic? Yeah, I don't know. It depends how how they have the toilets. That's a good one, fighting. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't think you can take it down to just individual skill. I think if you look at how is it making moves by himself? No, he is. He is. From what I heard, Parawind literally chained everyone in his team up and went to the org and then kicked two players and replaced two others. None of the others knew. Scream had no idea, nor did Snoopy. Snoopy was like, Snoopy was still playing support. He didn't have any clue. We got some OG news in the chat. Scream claiming it was his idea, like everything is. Classic Scream. Anyway, but yeah, basically, you, you, uh, uh, what I'm saying is the whole argument that... Uh, yeah, we, we'll get onto that in a minute, Echo. The whole argument that you think a, a player is better individually or maybe even has better potential, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not the one and only thing you need to look at. I agree that it is something you can look at, is potential for players and how well they've been playing and things like that, uh, especially from the outside. And game day is important. Game day is really important. I would say the game day is more important than non-game day, um, as long as your team is doing okay. But, you, you got to remember that there's things outside of, of game day that we don't see. Like most of the SPL season is things that we don't see. It's the, the, you know, the practice days, you know, the five days a week they're scrimming outside of, outside of the SPL. Is that a suede jacket? No, it's a cord jacket. Thank you for asking them. Um, and behind me is a denim jacket. Yeah. I'm mixing up my fabrics lately. So yeah, do you wish they would stream scrims? I mean, they, they can it's just the the, game, the the league's way too competitive for that to go fan, I'm afraid. I do miss that, though. Back in the real old days, like, um, what were they called? Were they ju Juice at the time? No, not Juice. Root. Root screaming, streaming scrims. Do you guys remember that? Like, Anatoly and, and uh, Lasses would... I think, they were, I think they were Root at the time, I want to say. But yeah, it was great. And uh, the the stream highlights, the scrim highlights stuff was incredible. I wish I wish scrim highlights came back. 
I think uh, Dave did great scrim highlights and um, and Obey did one as well. I'm in Obey scrim highlights, by the way, owning vote. I don't know if you guys, uh, that's a shout out to me. Uh, owned him. Rival as well? Yeah, Old Rival. Old Rival did too. They were great. They were great. Shout out to those videos. Anyway, okay, I think that's enough. Um, I think that's enough United chat. My, again, just to sum up my opinion on the United changes, they're going to make the team, I think they'll make the team better. I don't think, the team can't get worse, right? That's the, that's almost the, the best thing about the roster changes for, for United is they, they cannot, they cannot get worse. They're already 0-10. They have to do slightly better, right? Which is great um, for them. It takes the pressure off a bit. Um... But I, I do think it's genuinely a good a good move for them. I think Snoopy didn't Snoopy. I think he really did try in support. I think we saw him grinding it and ranked and stuff like that, putting the effort in and really doing his best. But I think it just you know just proved kind of too tall of a task for him to switch role. And I'm looking forward to seeing him back in ADC and Gino and Baskin coming to the SBL. I'm excited for it. So next up, so 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 the next roster change we're going to talk about is. One that was supposedly done, what was it? What was it? Somebody, was it Roe tweeted 15 minutes before the roster lock uh, deadline? Something like that? Was that the, I think that was the, the number quoted 15 minutes before the roster lock deadline. And that's that. Can I lick the deck at the, no, I can't. And that's that. SOT is out of the Renegades. And rosters are fully locked i believe so is in still and uh variety is in so they've made a solo lane straight swap sot for variety um uh, if you told me this has happened six months ago six months ago everyone's like i mean of course <laughs> you know what i mean six months ago everyone's like yeah i mean obviously you make that change variety tenured support tenured solo player you know was considered the best player in the world season three at worlds um has had a lot of consistency over the years but now it becomes a lot more up in the air because of how people feel about sot and things like that sot obviously let, let's let's start off with the the kind of elephant in the room which we need to talk about which would be sot having previously gone on a one week break <laughs> it was a double game week for for renegades they ended up taking two losses i believe with rose subbing in i think it was two games right two sets rather um rose subbed in for them and they obviously felt like they had to remove sot for a reason i think there was toy lungs came out about it. it was to do with attitude and him being in the wrong mental space um and then he comes back the next week and they they beat ghost and they give ssg a run for their money and he plays pretty well. I think in particular in the second set, first two games, he played really sick. It was like the best of SOT was the first two games where, as particularly the Fenrir game in game two, I think he was really good. I think it was Achilles game one, if I remember right. He played really solid. Um, I think the, those games were almost decided in solo throughout the three games. So I think that Nika did get the better of him game one. Um... But, you know, like, SOT had a good set. But then the third game, it was kind of classic SOT. He has two great games, and then he uh, he picked Susano, which is something we've seen him do well on before, but he got soundly punished by SSG. SSG were pretty ready for it. They punished it. They ganked it early, put him behind. You know, it's one of these things that it's a confidence pick. It's when you're feeling yourself, you pick it up. And, and in that particular set, it didn't work out. But I've seen, I've seen a lot of... Um, I've seen a lot of discourse on Reddit. And why I bring this up is I've seen discourse on Reddit and stuff where people are like, yeah, SOT had the weekend of his life. He played incredible, blah, 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 blah. Which I don't really agree with. I think he had two great games against SSG. I think against Ghost, it was a it was a team-oriented performance that they they played a lot better. I think against Ghost, they're, 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 I think their drafting was incredible against Ghost. This is kind of a bit of a Renegades kind of fan fan uh fanboying i guess for it for a second here i think renegades were sick against ghost by the way like the the morrigan rat draft was so cool with the sobek and the what was the other what was the other uh what was the other cc i think it was another guardian right it was sobek and something else and it was kuzenbo yeah kuzenbo solo and it was super cool i love their comp i love the way they drafted it but the ghost set was not solo diff is what i would say 
I think Sot played well. I think he, he definitely played well. He, he looked much better than I expected him to coming off a week's break, but I guess you're motivated, right? But he played really well. And then I think against SSG, he had two great games and a, and a really bad game on the Susano. And it wasn't, it wasn't that he played bad. It was just that he picked a bad god, I think. Um, so yeah, I think that SOT had a good weekend last weekend. But uh, people I think are, yo, aggro. Thank you very much for the host. Welcome to Tipsy Talks, everyone. You've missed half of my thoughts. Uh, but I don't have that many left after half are gone. That's one gone. One remaining. Anyway, we're talking about uh, the SOT change uh, for the Renegades at the moment. We were talking about how... Basically, the, the upshot of my general thoughts was that I think that People have been saying that SOT had an incredible weekend after the week off, and I think he had a I think he had a good weekend. I think he had a couple of great games against SSG, but I think he again showed his inconsistency, especially with the Susano game in Game Three against SSG, where he got kind of farmed. Which I don't know. I think it was just like I think it was just he thought it would be a good pick, and it didn't turn out that well because Cherio ganked him level two, which is hard to account for, admittedly. Um, but yeah. I don't think he had as good of a weekend as some people have been saying. Some people have been complaining that he got kicked. I just like to, I like to kind of, because I, I rate it. I, for the record, I rate SOT really highly. I think he's a really great player. I think he has a, 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 a I, in my opinion, he has, I, I don't want to say he has a higher skill ceiling than Variety because we've seen Variety at the top of his form. Season, uh, season three, pardon me, season three worlds, Variety. Did you guys watch that? I don't know if you guys all saw that. But that man was on a... That man was on fucking crack cocaine. I don't know what he was doing, dude. I was coaching him at the time, and I don't know what he was fucking doing. I know why it worked out so well. Basically, Twig... This is getting a little bit too much into the meta that Season 3 Worlds, but Twig was buying Hog and giving Variety room to run the map, but Variety was taking that room and running with it. He was taking the space he was handed and, you know, plowing a hole into the enemy team. Uh, and he was basically uh, on unbelievably form that season, unbelievable form that Season 3 Worlds. And you, can, you know that he can do it under pressure, blah, 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 blah. You know that he's a consistent player, and I think that's maybe why the changes come through from the Renegades. So they've had issues with consistency uh, with SOT. I think it, I, I think everybody, even the biggest SOT fans in the chat, you guys are going to say consistency has been a problem for him. I think he's had his great games and he's had his bad games. We saw even, what was the set? He played Thor twice in a row, right? He played Thor... One game, and he looked unbelievable. He was taunting the enemy team. He was crushing them. I think it was against United, if I remember right. Or was it Ghost? I don't know. It was United. NoobTube says United. I think it was EU. It was against Variety? Yeah. And he ran the first game, right? He absolutely crushed it. He was taunting. He was running about. He was even a little bit too cocky, I think, in the first game. But then game two, he just, dis he just disappears and gets destroyed. He picks Thor again, and he gets absolutely... Demolished. Luckily, I think he came in in game three and won and won the set. Well, they must have because the United haven't won a set yet. So they came in in game three and won the set. But again, that was the the kind of dichotomy of of uh, Soul Virtual, right? You get these great games and you get these you get high highs and low lows. I think is the is the almost the the summary of of SOT. I think he has like almost some of the highest highs in the league when it comes to solo lane players. But he also will fall down and he just won't perform in a lot of games, which I think is maybe why Renegades have come in and made the, made the change. Variety, he's been in the league for a long time. I don't, I don't know. I think Variety probably joined Season 1. He was definitely in Season 2 and Season 3. I think he was in Season 1. Can anyone correct me there if I'm wrong? But he was on Coast Season 1. There we go. He was on Coast Season 1. Lloydy, of course you know. But yeah, he was on Coast Season 1. He's been, in, he's been in the league for so long, and he's been a consistent solo lane performer. And I do actually think that's kind of what Renegades need. I think they need consistency. They need a strong voice. They need confidence. I think 
I think if we're getting a little a little too far into it, I think they almost need a shock collar, which I don't know if they have. This is this is so far out of left field, by the way. I'm so far outside of the Renegades team that I can't say. Um, I can't say for sure if this feeling is correct. In fact, it's probably wrong. Hello, Sam. Thanks for the AA viewers. Welcome. Mwah. Thanks for the host, Sam. Appreciate it. Uh, good evening, Coast. Good evening, Kavir. Um, what do I, would I say I like this move, the Renegades move? So we're talking about, again, again, we keep, we get, we're getting interrupted by hosts. How rude. Um, do I like the move for Renegades to remove SOT and replace him with Variety? I think from the outside looking in, I do. What's the changes? Okay, I'm going to go over this one last time. United have removed Variety and Guy J. Moved Snoopy back to ADC, and they brought in Gino and Baskin. So Baskin solo, Gino support, Snoopy ADC, still hurry mid, scream jungle. My hands are moving about, like as if these positions make sense. And on the other hand, uh, Renegades have removed SOT, and they have brought in Variety. I can't explain once more, no. Sorry, my hands are tired. So... Do I think, again, have I talked about, have I even done everything? Have I talked about it all? Okay, I'm losing it. I'm losing it a bit, chat. I'm losing it a bit. I'm losing my thread. Okay. So, Renegade's roster change. Do I think it's a good change overall? Yes. Yes, I do. That's basically, that's basically the upshot of it. I think the Renegade's roster change is good because I think... They have, they have explosive presence, kind of, and 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 unpredictability and almost inconsistency already in their roster. I think that Laspra and Jake are two players already who I think are quite inconsistent. I think you've had a lot of issues with Renegades where you look at the team and you see individual players performing at different times. I think it's been a problem with that team and I think bringing one more consistent player into the roster is going to make a big like a decent difference in my opinion um which is why I think it's good overall I think the SOT was too off and on for me I think if you combine that with um I previously said Jake was the most consistent I think he's the most I think he's the best on the team I don't know if he's the most consistent I'd say that Barra is consistently where he's at and i think van's consistently where he's at recently i think both are pretty consistent these days but do i think that they're consistently above um jake's average no i don't i think jake's good games are way way above either of their good games personally as of late but that's just me um you don't think SOT was the problem? I don't think SOT was the problem. I think Renegades have other problems, personally. But I think he was a problem. I don't, I, I don't want to say a problem. I feel like that's kind of harsh. So what I want to say is that I think SOT is a really, really good player. I really do. I think he's great. Um, I think he's like he innovates, which I love. He's one of the few solo laners who innovates in the league. He plays different stuff. He makes things work. Um, but, I mean, if you're at the point where you need to be removed from a roster for a week for poor performance or for poor mental, I don't know what to say, poor mental fortitude for not, for not being on the right page with your team, for, for making scrims a bad environment for blah, 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 blah. Um, I think that. If you if you get removed at that point and then a top solo laner becomes available who's consistent, who as far as I'm aware doesn't have particular men uh well I mean I don't think he has in my opinion variety does not have attitude problems. That's I, I don't think he does. I've teamed with him. I thought he had a good attitude. I think he's had I think he's had um from what I've heard in other times he's had um, disagreements with other players on teams he's been on, which maybe has led to friction. 
But uh, I, I've never thought he had attitude problems. I always thought he brought his, his A game, especially on game day. Maybe he's not quite as good on scrims as he is on game day, but I, I rate him as a player. I think he's quite consistent. You never really, you're never worried about variety showing up on game day. And I think, I think that bringing in variety to this team gives them another, another pillar of consistency, another thing they can lean on. And uh, when that their less consistent players perform, they will look better because they will have. They only need two. They need two rolls of the dice to turn up above four. You know? Do you guys? Do you guys see what I mean on that? I don't know. I don't know if other people see this with with Renegades, but for me, it does feel like with some of their players, SOT was one of them. You're rolling a dice, and it's like, what's it gonna? If you get a six, dude, you're winning that game. If you get two sixes, yeah, if you get two sixes, you're winning that game. And now two sixes, even two fives will do it. Okay, so, yeah, obviously there was a big screaming fucking X mark in the the SOT um, tweet longer where he emitted Van. He said thank you to all his teammates except Van. I mean, it is what it is. You know, you, like somebody's got to be the bad guy on every team. You know, when you kick a player, someone's got to be the bad guy. I assume in this case, Van was the bad guy. I wouldn't read too much into it. I don't know if they didn't get on personally. It's whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It means nothing to me. I don't know if it means anything to anybody else. I assume, I think Van's the captain. Could, could somebody on, can somebody in chat correct me if I'm wrong? But I think Van's the... The renegade's captain, so I assume he will have had to make any um any movements. There you go, Van's captain. Um SOT said Van was trash on stream. Yeah, I mean there's obviously some bad blood between them. But I mean, what does it matter? I don't think Van's bad. I don't think I, I probably I don't think SOT thinks Van's bad, really. He's probably just Maybe he does. Maybe he does. I don't know. It's I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it's hard not to be annoyed, especially when you think that you're not the problem on a team. It's hard not to be annoyed if you get removed. You know, like you got to expect in a in a way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think with the roster change, I I I can absolutely see where all the roster changes came from, and uh, yeah. To sum up my thoughts, United are now a better team, and I think Renegades... I think United are, like, without doubt a better team. I think Renegades is a little more of a doubt. Like, we see how the players gel together and stuff like that, but I think they're a better team as well. I think it's questionable. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think, chat? We can open this up to the floor. We can open this up to the floor. Yeah, saying Hurry has played better than, than Wolfie this year is not correct. I'm sorry, but he hasn't. I like Hurry. I like Wolfie. Wolfie has been far better. Far better. It's not even... I don't think he's even particularly close. I think... Yeah. You think any other team should have made roster changes? I mean, I think that... Um, I think that Variety was not the worst solo laner in the league. And I think that uh, him getting picked up by a team is good. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. You personally don't like SOT to begin with? I mean, it's your choice. It doesn't really matter what you th what you think about him. But honestly, SOT was not the first person you replaced, but Variety was way better than every other option. Yeah, I agree with that, homie. I don't know if I would... I don't know who I'd replace on that team. I think they're not playing that well individually as a whole. But uh, I think that SOT for Variety is a, a straight swap that, that I can't see. I don't know. It's the easiest one to make, right? Where else do you make the change? No no comment, Bob. Opinion on Obey's roster. I mean, no, I think Obey are really on the up and up. I think Ducky's playing better of late. I think, in particular, the duo lane has stepped up a lot. I think Wolfie's still the best player on that team by a mile. I think Sino's still good. But the duo lane stepped up a lot, which matters a lot because I think they were bad before and now they're not bad. Now they're pretty good, especially in the laning phase. I think if they translate the way they play in lane to later in the game, I think they'll they'll become a really strong team. I actually, I, I like the, the Obey roster at the moment. I think they've stepped up a lot. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
Haddix is no longer comp banned, no. I think Uzi deserves a spot in SPL. I don't know. I've never seen him as an SPL level player, to be honest. I've seen him play like decent, but I don't know if he's quite there yet. There's, yeah. I also feel like solo lanes, the, the, the positioning with the most kind of talent outside of the league. I don't know if this is just me. At least this is the case in EU, I think. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of talent in solo. Then out Baskin in when Baskin was still free. There you go. I mean, it's, uh, it's hard to say if he would have joined, blah, blah, blah. I don't, they're not, I don't think, I don't think Baskin's pals with the SSG, with the Renegades boys, sorry, like he is with the, the United boys. I imagine it was a much easier switch to make in the, in the United sense. I think PK should have thought about roster swaps. Um, thought about maybe. I wouldn't make roster swaps if I were them. They just need to play better. I know it sounds, you know, just play better forehead, but. That's uh, that's where I'm at. Which landed Haddock sub in for SSG? SNG? It was the Super Regionals last year. Whatever we call them. What do you think United ceiling finishes now? I mean, I still think like... Sit. Is there ceiling if they win like every... <laughs> it's tough to finish above that. Thank you, Reggie. I love you too, man. Hello, JJX. Um, Basque actually replaced Van and all the United? Yeah, that's true. PK just needs to stop throwing. I mean, I don't think they're throwing. I think they just suck against top teams. How many games do you need to see to do an updated power ranking? I don't know. It depends how many subs I get. <laughs> I'm just going to sell out for, for power ranking so they don't like doing them. With that five head, that's me, dude. Look at the size of it. Massive. CRNG getting to Worlds now? Um, I have no idea. Like, that's the thing. I have no idea how these... I think you need to give it a couple weeks. I had Lagavulin 16. I don't think I've had the 16, no. Who comes out of the bye week stronger? I think mean, it depends, Lord Bog. It's really hard to say. It depends on how their practice went. It depends how their momentum is going into games. It's tough. Shag my arse! Yo. Hi, YouTube. Welcome Lord Boo. Bob, thank you very much for the prime. Welcome back to the hashtag ANH. Welcome back my arse. Appreciate it. Two months. Thank you. So I'm getting to the end of my beer here and we're getting to the end of the stream slash video i don't know you guys been happy about how this went you guys this is the kind of format that you guys would like are there any changes you would like to suggest i don't know how do you think radiance will return i think they'll return solid but not where they were juggernaut i think they, they'll they'll have a bit of catching up to do personally we'll see though radiance gonna be playing this week i believe so Chaz. last i heard they were scheduled to play this week, and they were going to be playing this week. I think I can't remember who they play. You miss Guy J? Me too. Yes, I think Benji will be good to play soon. Enough. I have just shagged the arse. Thanks for shagging the arse, Big Hayden. Welcome back to the hashtag KNH and welcome back to my arse. Coach asked Guy J this week. We'll see. I don't know. I don't want to just bring in co-casters. Rock the boat, you know. We've had a good thing going. Interview from any Renegades player? I mean, I'm sure they're they're busy. I don't know. I don't want to like. It's awkward. You got to remember, Caviar. They don't they don't want to talk about this stuff too much, and they and me asking them like uh, me asking them prickly questions is just going to be uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about it. I don't want to ask them questions about it. Is basically the case. I don't know if you. It's difficult, right? It's really difficult when you kick a player. When you you kind of want to keep things behind closed doors. It's not cool to out any issues that you have, in my opinion. I don't like it at all. Um, so yeah. Sanguine find a second wind? Yeah, I think they will. I think they're gonna come back in. Yeah, I agree with that, Rose. That's, see what Rose's saying here? I'm sure you guys can all read it. But Rose basically saying he doesn't wanna, like they, there's no need for them to talk about it. You know, it's done, it's done. It is what it is. You guys can think what you want to think. Teams make decisions for a reason. See you later, Gopher, man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and, you know, it, it just... There's a lot of stuff that we don't see behind the scenes. That's, that's, that's the thing to take away from this. Is that there's a lot of stuff that, that none of us know about. Maybe, maybe you guys don't know about it. What, what if I know all about it? What if I know all about it, chat? 
I've got a fucking, I've got a bug in Ro's room. I just hear him ranting to Biggie every night. Phones him up. All right, mate. I can't do it. I can't do it, dude. I agree with that. I agree. See what Barracuda's just said there? Dude, that's the most... Bar I hear Barracuda phoning up Jeff every night. I've got a bug in his room. He's like, all right, mate. He's also Australian. That's my Australian accent, apparently. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go on forever. Um, great. This is where we're at. Superb. I think this is a good time to end. Good time to end at least the recording. I hope you guys have been... Also, chat, if you guys would like me to change this this thing at any point let me know i can i can do it i can do it if you guys prefer like a different chat thing i don't know i'm i'm shit at this all right just let me know youtube this is for youtube not for you twitch um or if you guys want me to ban any of these people i can do that as well any of them just pick one we'll have a vote cool that's gonna be it then. um yeah, I think I think that's I think I said everything I wanted to say. Low fifty percent. Yeah, I feel like it, it could be a little bit like a little. Um, I don't know. I just grabbed one of the Streamlabs ones, but it doesn't. Maybe it's my background's too bad. Like if I had my, I think if I had my jacket. Look at this. Look at how good it is with my uh, with my denim jacket over it. What do you guys think about the denim jacket? By the way, I mean you can't see it at all, but do you like it? Do you like it, chat? It's nice. Uh, but yeah, with a different background, it looks a lot better. Anyway. We'll work on that. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to end off here. And uh, and move along. I'm going to go to bed. I've got work in the morning. It's 1 a.m. This has been Tipsy Talks. Is Tipsy Talks a good name? That was what the chat voted for. T no, Tipsy Talks. Thanks for checking my Holy arse. shit, you're so sexy. We'll end on that note. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Say bye to YouTube, Twitch chat. I'm going to end the stream. End the, end the recording.